Aparna Raja, personal branding strategist and coach. Today, I'm very glad that I have an opportunity to speak to you about body language. The topic for today is a great body language for a confident you. Now, the format of this speech is going to be that I give you some information on this topic. And after that, towards the end, we will have time for a Q&A. Definitely ask me some questions. With that, let's begin. I'm sure you've all heard a lot about body language. Oh, she has good body language. Body language is not so great. Something is not right about that body language. But what is this body language? What makes up good body language? How do you work on it? How do you know what your body language is right now? And how do you make it work for it? That is what we're going to be talking about for the next 20 minutes. So first of all, what is body language? Why is it so important? Now, let me tell you something. As human beings, we've evolved over thousands of years, right? And body language has also evolved. But mind you, it remains a very, very big part of our communication. Communication is extremely important. You know that. But did you know that your body language is the biggest, most important element in communication? Not the words you say. In fact, it is said that 55% of the communication that you do is based on your body language. Only 7% depends on the words that come out of your mouth. Hmm. Makes a lot of sense, right? In fact, there are some people who don't talk so well, but they're so charismatic. They come on stage and you go, wow, you want to listen to them. Some people, uh, example, your lecturers and professors, you know they're telling you good stuff. You simply don't feel like listening to them. Why? One of the reasons is their body language might not be so confident or might not interest you to hear what they're saying, right? This is okay in college. Imagine you get into the real world. Then what? If you know in your communication, in important interactions like meetings, interviews, anything, if this body language, 55% of it is working against you, all the preparation, all the studies that you do might not really help you. So today we will see how to make use of this body language to work for you. So first things first. When you speak, like I said, 55% is your body language, very small percent is verbal, and there is about 38%, which is vocal variety, we say, you know, the way I speak, the highs and lows, my voice quality, the pitch, volume, and all of that. We will leave that aside. What makes up body language? It is right from the time you start speaking, you enter a room, you don't even have to start speaking actually. You enter the room, the way you walk, the way you stand, the way you sit, your facial gestures, the way you use your hands, one of the most important things. What you do with your hand, how you stand, all of that constitutes body language. Let me give you an example. You go to a party. Right? And you're sitting there, you're looking at people. Suddenly someone comes walking and you immediately judge whether you like them or not. Yes, we say we don't want to be judgmental. We should not judge. But judging is part of our survival instincts. Man needs to survive. So these are part of our survival instincts. We will judge. Right? Why do you judge? How do you judge? There are some instincts inside you. There are some body languages which make someone look very approachable, very trustworthy, not so trustworthy, reliable, not so reliable, interesting, boring. All of that in body language? Absolutely. You can think of examples when I say all of this in your head. You have met people like this. You will keep meeting people like this. But what kind of a person are you? Do you know that? Have you analyzed? If not, you can start today. I'll tell you how to do that. Now, 
what is confidence when you say how do you say someone is confident right it is the body language obviously the things they say comes secondary i come onto the stage and i stand i stand nicely and i start speaking ah confident if i came here and i said uh, hi i'm going to speak about the uh, body language you think she doesn't look confident why should i even listen to her exactly same thing applies to you in every instance in your life when you get into a situation what do you need out of that situation what are you contributing to that situation based on that you should align your body language now you already have one your body languages are created there are some amounts of it which comes even genetically you know when newborn babies are, uh, are there they have some inborn characteristics body languages that comes naturally that is genetic but small amount of it a lot of it is through the environment we grow up in you know the kind of family we are brought up in the city we grow up in the people we see our friend circle family circle exposure if you see a lot of people when they get into college are very meek more shy but by the time they probably even finish their mba and they go out they're more confident right what caused this transition it was the exposure the education the knowledge the thinking the thought process a lot of things come into it and they all affect body language now it's quite unfortunate that the thing that matters a lot like how you present yourself and how you speak and put forth yourself as a person is not a correct part of our curriculum and that is why you have to start working on it on your own through the tips i give you today now this is a huge vast topic but we are going to give you a small insight into it so that you become aware that there is something like this and you start doing the best you can okay right so when you say body language what constitutes it i told you the gestures the hand hand movements the way you hold yourself and all of that have you noticed what you do how you sit your cameras are off now i can't see how you all are sitting or standing or sleeping i don't know but observe yourself how are you sitting if you're sitting in college you're probably sitting a certain way it's 3:30 you probably had your lunch now you're tired you're sitting casually like that it's a casual way of sitting if you're at home you're probably lying down just your headphones on if you're in front of your professor you're probably sitting properly right now why did this change we change it depending upon the environment we are in okay now i'm going to be telling you some things that you can do first thing start observing your body language right what do you do when you're speaking to people what do you do how how are you moving your faces how are you using your hands how are you standing do you hunch do you sit straight do you do this a lot what are you doing and when you're interacting with people where how are you looking at them are you looking into their eyes are you looking down what are you doing with your hand when you do that are you fidgeting observe this observe your body language first that is the very first thing that you have to do in order to bring about a positive change in your body language right then once you observe your body language there are a few things that you have to do which will help you your hands okay so this is the second thing you've observed you know what you're doing in any situation uh, you will also notice when you observe you will notice in some places you're more confident okay especially in places that you're used to amongst your friends your family and you will notice there will be other places where you are not very confident your usual self probably in meetings in meeting with people of a higher level maybe a, um, some recruiter or a meeting with someone elder in your family something like that it could be anything you're probably not very comfortable a new environment you will be uncomfortable the same person who had this confident body language won't be that confident there you will observe this find out those situations right second thing what do you do 
you consciously start using positive confident gestures i will be telling you some tips you start using those right third thing initially it is more forced you will have to use it consciously then it becomes a part of you when you keep doing it it becomes a part of you third observe the changes that happen to you in your head when you start doing it believe it or not it is said that our emotions dictate our body language that is if i am feeling very angry my body language will be certain way if i am very happy my body language is certain way similarly when you start changing your body language you will see that this change on the outside will start affecting you emotionally but in the right way in situations where previously you were not confident you will start feeling a little bit more confident you're sure of yourself you're okay i'm not saying you won't be 100% nervous but you won't definitely you will bring down that nervousness to a great level and you will feel be better about yourself you will perform much better can my body language help me do this absolutely 100% change your body language your emotions change when your emotions change you perform better it's science it's pure science okay so we spoke about what you can do how to start change it and check the outcome now what can you change what can you change let me tell you first a few things that you can start doing easy to start doing right and then i will tell you some common things which we do which you can avoid the first thing your posture posture is the way you stand you sit basically the way your head to backbone is placed very important you walk into a room with a very confident posture you send out a very positive message the person you make your first impression the first few seconds first few minutes that you meet a person it is said within 4 minutes you make your first impression and first impressions are difficult to change so that first impression you can contribute a great deal to it if you have a good posture when you walk in into any situation into any room or if you're sitting say you have a call you're attending an interview or a viva whatever you're doing sit comfortably in a erect way straight way but not too erect just relaxed shoulders relaxed neck sit straight right great posture helps a lot second thing this is important you know when you're nervous you do a lot of things which you are not aware of even i do that now i'm noticing so i know but you do a lot of things you know what you do you'll hold your cell phone like this and you'll go or like this most of us have our phones in our hand all the time we keep doing this or this those are all signs of nervousness we'll keep doing this to our shirt cuff your cuffs and then your sleeves and you're wearing a ring you'll keep doing this or you'll be cracking your knuckle like this these are all things we do when we are nervous it comes automatically subconsciously it will come so you have to ensure you don't do that so for that you start noticing right so avoid these unwanted movements do i stand straight still no little movements are okay but unwanted movements which are repeated some people when they are sitting they'll shake their leg have you noticed shaking leg no don't when you move a lot you convey a message of being under confident you convey a message of being very anxious very nervous inside you might be but best to avoid showing it on the outside when you show it on the outside it could be a meeting interview like i said you're there the person opposite to you is already getting an idea that this person is very nervous it doesn't work in your favor right if i had two candidates one of whom is very confident and is able to answer well second one who is nervous who is also able to answer equally well i will definitely choose the one who is more confident obviously even you will choose that person right so avoid unnecessary movements like you know fidgeting if you're sitting in a chair unnecessarily shaking turning now you have those chairs which you sit and you can turn around people 
unconsciously start turning in those chairs. Be aware of all that. Don't do that. Just sit if you're sitting, hands on the table, nicely place it, hands on the table like this and sit. That's it. Fidgeting with your hair, avoid that. Definitely. Even I have this habit, but it has to be consciously avoided. If you feel you keep touching it, consciously stop it. Right? The third thing, smile. Smile, not grinning, smiling. A pleasant smile is a me is sends out a message of warmth. You send out a message that you're a warm person, a friendly person, an approachable person. A pleasant smile when you meet someone works in your favor. Fourth thing, introductions. This is where a lot of us fumble. When you have to introduce yourself, you would probably say, hi, I'm Aparna Raja, how are you? Right? This handshake, we all get confused. Should I shake my hand properly? Especially if it is the opposite gender, how should I give? Should it be firm? Should it be tight? Should I crush the hand to show I'm very powerful and confident? A lot of confusions. Let me tell you, there are a variety of handshakes and these handshakes mean different things. You can observe politicians, you can observe actors, you can observe the queen, queens and all, you know, the royal family. They have different handshakes. They all have a meaning. We don't need that. We only need a confident handshake. I'm going to show you how a confident handshake is done. Try and practice it. And the next time you meet someone, try using it. It immediately sends a message that this is a confident person. Not overconfident, not underconfident, and a confident person. You're basically telling the person you're an equal. So how to do it? Let's assume there's another person. I don't have another person, so I'm just going to show you. Now, your hand should be sent out like this, perpendicular to the ground, not like this. Like some people do this, right? This, this is a very dominating handshake. It's not good to do that. It means to say, hey, I know everything. And some people do handshake when you say, they hand out their hands like this in the front. Ha. Huh. This is a very submissive handshake. Do not go. See, when you're doing this, it means you're trusting the person. You're giving power to the other person. In a formal setup, in a professional setup, this is not recommended. This is also not recommended. But you will see a lot of people doing this because they're not aware. But you don't do that. Now that you know. This is the perfect way of giving. Go handshake step one step forward okay handshake this is the web of your hand web to web touch them fully not here not here not here web web to web one two three four at the most three or four pumps these are called pumps one two three four when you're doing the handshake just say hi how are you or hi my name is so and so step back confident do not crush just Hold it firm, firm. It should not be loose. It should not be here. Women tend to give very loose handshakes sometimes. Don't do that. Web to web. This web to their web, hold it. Even if your hands are small, doesn't matter. Just go hold it firm. Hold it firm. Firm means it shouldn't fall off. It shouldn't trouble them. It shouldn't hurt them. Hold it like this. One, two, three, four. Hi, how are you? Three to four pumps, at the most five pumps, and then take it off. Don't keep holding it. If they keep holding it, it's quite uncomfortable, right? So just leave your hand, step back. So repetition, one more time. Step in the front, web to web. Hi, how are you? One, two, three, four pumps, maximum. Leave your hand, step back. That is the perfect professional handshake, right? So. I've given you about four good points. Posture, unnecessary movements, avoid it. Don't fidget, be comfortable. Third, smile. A smile is a great way of saying hello or greeting someone without saying the word. Smile, polite smile. That's enough. Then a great handshake when you introduce yourself. Now. These are basic things to introduce yourself and this shows confidence. Imagine you're doing this. You get into a room, you have a great posture, you sit comfortably, you give a good handshake, you don't move unnecessarily, you're sitting there. Half your job is done. 
you're doing very well. The rest of it, you're answering questions, you're speaking, it's great. The fifth thing that you need to do, keep a open body language. Now, what is an open body language? You need to understand that people will interact with you only when they feel comfortable, right? It, it could be in a professional setup or a personal setup. In a professional setup, if they don't feel comfortable with you, they will do only what is needed and back off, right? But we need to build rapports anywhere you go, even in an interview. You need to come across as that person I want to talk to. I want to hear more about, right? So practice an open body language. What is an open body language? Most of you must have heard that holding your hands like this means you're not open. See, body language is very complicated. It is a lot of things together. Just because of one gesture, we cannot judge someone, right? Maybe that person is feeling cold. Maybe that person is just holding hands like this because he feels comfortable. He wants to create his space. It could be anything. It is the whole thing. Your face, how you are keeping your face that time. Everything depends, right? So what is an open body language? What I'm doing right now is an open body language. I have my palms up when I'm speaking more, right? This is an open body language. When I do this, the way I speak will be accepted in a friendly way. Imagine I do this. Just listen to what I am saying, okay? I am telling you, do you see the change? Do you see the change in my tone? When you do this, it becomes a very dominated body language. You can use this sometimes when you have to use it. But professionally, you won't come across a situation because most of the time we want to, we are treated as equals, at least in the corporate world, we are all assumed to be equal, no matter who you speak to. So try and bring about more open body language when you're speaking, right? A little, this is when you're trying to assert, when you're trying to make a point, maybe you're having a um, small difference of opinion and someone is being very this thing, then you can say, no, this is right. This is right. That time you can probably use but keep this to a minimum, palm down to a minimum, palm up more and open body language. This is an open body language. This is definitely a closed body language, right? So practice this, these five things and you will see that there will be a lot of change in the way people react with you, the way they talk to you, the way they interact with you and the way they reciprocate with you, right? Now, I'm going to come to some specific don't do's. Okay, we we'll talk about that. One of the main things is in our country, this concept of space is fairly new. We don't understand much, but we are in a globalized world where we are interacting with all kinds of people, metros, international places, you know, we travel. So you need to understand space and what it means. Now, um, it is normally said that one or two fist space from me is my intimate space. Never approach someone in that space in a professional setup. They will be offended. They will definitely be offended. That's why in elevators, when you go, you'll see that people, you, know, you can't help, no? we're all standing so close, 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 close. What will people do? They'll immediately do this or they'll hold a bag or something. It is our a subconscious way of creating a space. We all want our space. We don't like someone else coming to that intimate space. We feel somewhat exploited. So never intrude into someone else's close intimate space. That space is reserved only for close family members or very close friends. The social space is about two handshakes. Two handshakes away is the social space. Stay in that space in office, when you go out to offices now, you're going to be taking up jobs. Stand in that one, two arm space, you know, that handshake space. Stand in that and talk. And it is very comfortable for both of you to interact. If needed, you have to give handshake. Step forward, give the handshake and step back. That's why I said you step forward, give and you step back. Because you have to keep in mind, no intrusion into the space. Right? So I hope you understand the concept of space. The other things. Now, uh, when it comes to how you're talking, your facial gestures and all of that, no? people notice you. You can't see how your face is going. You know, whether you're smiling, you're smirking, you're grinning, you're showing your teeth, what you're doing with your eyebrows, but the other person can see. We forget that because we can't see, we forget it when we are talking. 
So start looking into a mirror sometimes and see what you're doing with your face. Sometimes, not every day. Don't do it like an exercise, but once in a while observe. Or if you're making a video, see how you're using your face. I regularly do this. All the videos I shoot, all the meetings that I attend, I take a recording of it and I check and I keep changing. Sometimes my face expression will come across as being like, you know, very as if I'm bored. All of that happens. I'll try to change it. So once in a while, make a video and see how your facial gestures are. This is also body language. You know, this is also part of your body. Third thing, uh, when you want to show interest, when you're talking to someone and you want to show interest, automatically you see your head is going off like this to a side. Maybe your heads are like this. I don't know if it's interesting. Automatically, your body language will change without your knowledge. That's why I say, observe it. Similarly, if someone is talking about something you don't like, your body language will again change. The face will go like this. We do this. You think, oh, why will I do that in a meeting? People do it everywhere. It's not consciously done. So be aware of your facial gestures. And importantly, do not touch your face unnecessarily. Don't do all this unnecessarily when you're speaking with someone. If your head is really itchy, just slightly you can do, that's it. But touching your face, doing this, doing this, doing this, avoid it. You are definitely doing all of this. You're not aware of it. Observe it and avoid it. All in all, try those five things I told you, right? And avoid these few things. You will have a great confident body language, nothing can beat it. Thank you very much. With that, I hope you've learned something important, something to think about, find out more about it, start using it in your life and see the magic happen. Thanks a lot. Now we are open for questions.